Well, good evening. Probably look a little bit different to you. I got my hair cut today. I didn't let it get too bad, but she, she, uh, chopped it off pretty good. I'm glad. Um, I'll be reading tonight in Luke chapter six, um, verses number 48 and 49, the end of the chapter. This is where Jesus had spoke and he was telling about the foundations of the homes, the houses. Listen to this. It says, he is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. Immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Now, we see in this little story here where you have two men both of them were builders. Both of them built a house. Now, Jesus is using this as a parable. He's using it as a way of explaining the ones who hear the gospel, the ones who don't hear the gospel. He's comparing it to a house on a foundation. It's not the, it's not the house that is important. It's the story behind it. And I hope, I hope to be able to bring that out. You have two men that is building. You have two different houses that is built in two different locations. You have two foundations. One foundation is a rock. The other foundation is mere sand. It's mere sand. You got two kinds of materials. You got the material of the rock and you got the material of the sand. And you got two rainstorms. One verse calls it a flood and the other one doesn't. But both of them had a vehemently strong stream of water. And one outlived the other. One had a rock foundation. It's a picture of the rock of Jesus Christ that's holding our lives up if we've been born again. If you have truly been saved, you feel that foundation under you. I've been doing a lot of studying today. A lot of study. Um, I happen to have found a website. I posted it on Facebook. The website name is raptureready.com. Rapture Ready. Um, it sounds like it makes all in the world the sense to me. A lot of new things that I did not know. A lot of things that I learned that I didn't know before. There's some things that I'm still questioning because I want the truth. I want that foundation of the rock. I don't want a sand foundation. I want the good foundation, the heavy foundation, the foundation that ain't going to go anywhere. One of these houses had a rock foundation. 
I think it was the house in verse number 48 where the man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. He dug down deep on the edges to where he laid his house on a rock foundation. And one house had loose sand. Now, you know what? That house probably would have been fine to live in. But you got to remember, it talks about the storm that come. The house that was founded on a rock wasn't going to move because that rock wasn't going to move. And as long as there was no storm, the house that was built on the sand would have probably been just as good a house, maybe even a better house. But when the rain come and the wind blew and the stream started getting full, and it mentions that right here, it says, and when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. It couldn't even be shaken because of the right foundation. Like I say, that's not to say that the house that the man built on the sand wasn't a good house. It just didn't have a solid foundation. You know, few is found on the rock today. Few people is found on the rock of Jesus Christ today. I've been doing a lot of study today about end times. I've been doing a lot of reading on end times. I've been um, seeing what some people have to say about end times, things that I did not know, things that I feel like that I have at least a little bit more knowledge today than I did yesterday. But few is found on the rock. That rock is Jesus Christ. I believe it's mentioned the rock that gave water to the to the children of Israel was found, I think, in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. And it talked about that that rock was Jesus Christ. You know, another thing I noticed about that house that was on the rock, it took time to build that house. Now, did it take time to build the house on the sand? Sure. To form the actual house, it probably took the same amount of time for both. But where it took more time was to dig down the foundation to get to the rock. That took labor. It took time to build when you had to dig out a foundation. You know, another thing, too, it probably took some planning. Whoever decided they was going to build that rock or build that house on the rock, they probably had to consider the cost of that house and the time that it would take to build that house. I remember there's a scripture, I don't remember where it is where the Bible even said that a person needs to consider the cost. If you have enough money sufficient to finish the house, you need to consider the cost. It took time to build. It took planning. It took labor. It took more labor to build the house on the firm foundation than it did on the house on the sand. Matter of fact, 
the house on the sand probably went up a little bit faster because they didn't have to do the labor of the foundation. They could go ahead and start putting up the sides and putting on the top and all of that while they're out there digging that footer. I remember when I built my house that we had a footer here. I hauled in a pile of dirt. And we let that dirt sit and we leveled it off with the tractor and we wetted it. We let rain fall on it. We packed it down good fashion. I mean, we left it for a while to let it settle before we ever started digging the footer into that fresh soil. But that fresh soil was hard when we started digging that footer. And I remember that footer was probably 18 inches wide and about, and about two and a half foot deep. Had a lot of metal in it. Had a lot of iron in it. Had a lot of labor in it. All that metal had to be tied together. I remember when they brought the cement truck that they literally backed in on top and they put out the cement to fill in that footer. It took labor to do all that. Not only did it take labor, it took the right soul. You know, I'm talking about the location of the house. Now, Jesus is referring to one built his house on the sand, the other one built it on a, on a solid rock. So it leads me to believe that it could be two different men. Like I said, remember what I said a minute ago, two, two men, two houses, two locations, two foundations, two materials to build on, and two floods. That was a lot of power behind the rushing of that water. One house stood the test of time, the other one didn't. It stood to life's troubles. You know, we go through trouble all the time. Every one of us goes through a certain amount of trouble as well. But that house that was on the rock stood the test of time, and it stood the life's troubles. Let me cut to the chase tonight. I think everybody pretty much knows well, Kenny, we know where you're going with this. Well, maybe so. Here's the question. Which foundation is under you? Are you founded on the rock of Jesus? Which foundation is under you? What's holding you up? Here's another question that you got to ask. When will the trouble come? Now, if you're founded on the rock, it doesn't matter if the trouble comes tonight, tomorrow, or the next day. It doesn't really matter because you're founded on a solid foundation. But say, for instance, you're, you're questioning what foundation you're under. Say you don't know if you're under the sand foundation or the rock foundation, say you don't know. When will the trouble come? We don't know. I don't think these two people here that built this house knew that the streams was going to overflow. But the one that built his house on the rock felt comfortable that he did the initial labor enough to make that house where it would stand. Is that what the Lord does in us? Does he put us on a rock? Or does he build us on the sand? You notice that the builder maybe might not have owned the house. You know, there's a lot of houses that are built right here in the county. But they only hired to build the house. They're not hired to live in the house. They or building somebody else the house. And they have to guarantee the workmanship on the house, but they don't know. 
what kind of ground is up under that house when they get done with it. Let me ask you another question. Will this trouble, when this trouble does come, will it reveal the rock or will it reveal the sand? Now, you know, that stream that it talked about in these two verses right here revealed one foundation that stood the test of time. And the other foundation, the stream proved that that house fell and great was the fall of that house because it was founded on the sand. Will your trouble reveal the rock or the sand? Which one do you think it's going to reveal? Let me tell you this, like I've always said before, and I'm not going to stop now, the storm is coming. That storm that hit Louisiana is already out of there. But boy, did it leave a lot of damage. That's going to be a costly storm to have to get through. Some people is going back home to absolutely nothing. And you know what? Some of their houses was founded on a rock. But we're not talking about a natural house. We're talking about a spiritual house. It's high time to know is before the storm comes. You need to know if you're on the rock or you're on the sand. John 5.24 tells us, that we need to hear the gospel and we need to believe the gospel. And 1 John 5 and 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye believe on the name of the Son of God. The Bible says you can know. You can know. You can know positively. The, the thing that you're going to have to ask yourself, do you know? If the storm was to come today, we have no promise of tomorrow. Elderlyministry.com is a website. If you feel like giving me a call, you're welcome to call. I don't see many... Um, pages that have a phone number on them. I've been asking the question for somebody for the last couple of days and I've never gotten a response yet. And I never have got a response on YouTube. But here's the thing. I have my Bible that I can read and I can do like I did today. I can study and I can learn to make sure that my house is on a solid foundation. I hope that you know your foundation underneath. I was fortunate to watch my foundation be put up. I was fortunate to see how my foundation was installed. And you know what? If the Lord has taken the time to put you on a solid foundation, you ought to thank Him for it. Elderlyministry.com. There's a phone number there. You can call. You're welcome to call. Glad to talk with you. Anything I can do, yell. Thank y'all for watching again.